patient comes to see me, um, I may have on my agenda diabetes, but they may have on their agenda a safe place to sleep. I've been working in homeless medicine now on almost 17 years. It's become very intuitive to me that housing is in fact healthcare. There's just certain diseases we can't treat, whether it's medical, mental health, whether it's you know congestive heart failure, severe diabetes, schizophrenia, whatever the diagnosis is, there's the instability of homelessness exacerbates the very diseases that we're trying to treat. And it does so in very expensive and harmful ways. When we think of in terms of our patients uh, who don't know where they're going to sleep tonight, thinking in terms of the complexities of going to the pharmacy and getting prescriptions, uh, when we think in terms of complexities of storing medications, uh, when we think in terms of just, again, where am I going to sleep tonight? All of those other things, those higher level things, just go out the window. Many of our patients that are enrolled in the home-based program are hitting the emergency room and then hospitalized, or vice versa, at least monthly. So when we look at the mortality rates with homelessness, when we look at the costs associated with homelessness, when we look at the poor outcomes and the high utilization, it becomes very clear that housing is healthcare. And some of these diseases are simply, I wouldn't say impossible, but close to impossible to treat in the chaos and the stress of homelessness. Every person has a story and it's their story to tell but it's our responsibility to make sure that we create a safe place that they can share um, and not just walk out of an office with a prescription that they don't have the money to fill or walk out of the office with a prescription and they don't know how to take their medicine they, because they can't read. Sometimes it just takes a helping hand to do one kind gesture that can begin to give people the confidence to try to come back. So our job here is to try to meet the patient where they are so that we can then work together on shared goals. I may not have fixed their blood pressure. I may not have fixed their diabetes today. I can't fix their heart disease at this given time, but I fixed something that is top priority for them that day. And then when I bring them back in the next couple of weeks or a month, then we can, we can address the next thing. So if we can keep people at home, provide their care in primary care, as opposed to go into the emergency room or being admitted, then again, it's a win-win for everybody. Can we do better? Can we create more efficient systems around housing that are specifically kind of targeted at these higher risk patients who are at really high risk for poor, expensive outcomes and mortality? You look at the mortality rate in chronically homeless patients and um, it still hovers around 50. And so that is, you know, what are we doing wrong and is there something that we can do better? We can't fix um, when somebody gets behind on their rent and is making the difficult choices between paying their rent or buying their medicine. You know, no system can fix that on their own. And yet we all collectively agree that's where the system falls apart for people. So for me, kind of one of the things that Alliance has done really well over the last several years is make sure that we have forged these partnerships that reciprocate you know, between the homeless service system and the healthcare system and the housing system. It, it's a bipartisan across the board. It's an intuitive, cost-effective solution to prevent human suffering. And when you start talking in those terms, it's like you not only have an opportunity, it's really an obligation. If there's something that we can do better to reduce human suffering, oh, by the way, and also save money, then we have to step back and say, well, why aren't we doing this?